So this next song is a new song, and it's a congregational response song. And Colette and I think maybe Karen will be singing a line, and then we respond, we the congregation, respond with, we do. And, and another point, it is. So I will try to kind of cue you in, sing along with me. I'll be singing the responses, but I think you'll get it.
Morning, everybody. Morning. Merry Christmas. Merry Last... Christmas. That was awesome. Normally I have to check in with you guys twice, but you guys hit it, for, hit it the first time. That's awesome. Um, so glad to be with you this morning. So glad to be in God's house. So glad to be worshiping Jesus with you. Um, isn't it just wonderful to be able to gather? Um, I, I think back to March, April, <laughs> May. And uh, what this year has held, and um, it was kind of crazy, wasn't it? And so when, uh, when something is taken away and you get it back, you seem to, at least for me, I, I tend to be more thankful and grateful for it. So I am thankful to be able to stand here and look out and see faces. I'm so grateful to be able to uh, have a stream online and have those gather from home who otherwise wouldn't be able to, to worship. So... Um, I'm just so grateful for that, and I hope you are too. Uh, so a couple of announcements. Um, so tithes and offerings can be mailed in, or you can use uh, the online app. And um, I was able to confirm that the, the app does work, um, and several have given this week. So thank you so much for that. We really appreciate that. Uh, we appreciate you partnering with us as we... Um, as we preach the gospel here in East Montpelier and preach the gospel online, which uh, when you think about it, so East Montpelier is like a couple thousand people-ish. You know, you span it out, you got tens of thousands in central Vermont who are within driving distance of here. But then you think about it's online. Think about that for a minute. It's, this, we are preaching, this church is preaching Jesus online and that audience is billions. I mean, are, are we, we're, we're not going to reach billions, but the potential of that is there. And so uh, thank you for partnering with us with that. So Children's Church, uh, you may notice that Christine and Jason aren't here this morning. They are uh, preparing for Christine's son to get married tomorrow, um, Connor. Connor and Leah, so if, if you participated with us with uh, Vacation Bible School last summer, uh, Connor and Leah helped us out, uh, and so they're getting married tomorrow, and as you know with weddings, it takes a little bit to get ready for one, and so they're utilizing their time this morning. So for children, um, we are going to not do the online stuff, so if you're online and you're uh, waiting for that, that's probably not going to happen. I believe Christine and Jason communicated that out, but we will have... Uh, a movie to watch for the kids. It's in that room there, Jan, for for the kids. Okay, so you can just play in there with Allie, and there's another little one uh, over here who might want to play too. But the the movie's in the middle middle Sunday school room here. Uh, but they could probably just play anyway. Uh, all right, candlelight service six to seven p.m. here Christmas Eve. Uh, it'll look a little different, uh, but we will have candles. We will preach Jesus. We will sing carols. And it will be a wonderful uh, night, wonderful tradition for us here at Crossroads to have our Christmas Eve service, and we will stream that. Women's ministry on Tuesday nights, uh, Tuesday night Facebook group. Uh, I've heard wonderful things about that. That's going well. Ladies, feel free to join that. Simply worship tonight, uh, 6 to 7 p.m. Um, it will be a majority Christmas songs. Some you may know and some you may not, but um, we're just going to worship Jesus through all of it that happens. So uh, that's the focus of tonight. Wednesday night prayers. Prayer is still happening on Wednesdays. You can contact Steve. Uh, there's a Bible study happening on Saturdays uh, from 9 to 1030 via Zoom. Uh, prayer requests. So uh, Tammy, uh, we prayed for her, uh, f her father um, and mother, and they have all for, they had COVID, and they've all recovered, and so they're doing well. And so praise the Lord for that. Um, I was able to talk to Mark, um, Jared a little bit this week. We exchanged a few messages and. He's doing better, so he's had some physical issues and some physical things going on, and, and so he's still recovering, but he is doing better, so continue to pray for Mark. Um, any other prayer requests out there? Uh, yes, Lisa. This week we learned that our brother-in-law died of COVID. Oh, dear. He's been exposed to it Thanksgiving. If you have any family members, 
so you Good. Sherry. Okay. Okay. So John's sister Sherry, her husband passed from COVID this uh, very recently this week. This week, Friday morning, Friday morning. Um, he was exposed during Thanksgiving time and just happened very quick. I mean, that's what this 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 crazy virus bug does or can do. Um, and so um, I, I know we're going to talk a little bit about um, plans <laughs> and uh, the title of the message this week is uh, not the plan. Um, <laughs> and, um, and it certainly wasn't the plan for this family, um, you know, and, and certainly this Christmas, ho- hopefully there's, we find ways to gather and do it safely with with family. I, you know, I I missed. We love Thanksgiving and we love doing. I mean, we big fat turkey stuffing and all the mixes, and we're just gathering around a table and eating. And unfortunately, we weren't able to do. We didn't. We didn't choose to do that. We uh, we did eat uh, a meal with our family, but they were on a computer screen. And so maybe that's what it has to be for this Christmas. And. It's not the plan, but I, I would, I, I don't want to hear those stories, you know, but it's sad. I, I don't know the, I wish I had the answer. I wish um, I could say, hey, feel free to do whatever you want, but clearly we can't. So pray for that family. What was her name again? Sherry. Sherry. Um, wow. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is following a lot with his head. Okay. Not only my uncle. Okay. And um, Johan, he was traveling with him every day. He got his uh, COVID. He was the one who got into the positive mm. with COVID. So he had a twist of blood. <coughs> and had a test of COVID. And first that came back negative. He went back to work. Okay. All right, so Martha requests that we pray for her children. Um, so Danny said hi. Uh, both Danny and Naum are struggling with depression, so we need to pray for that. Uh, that is um, a very one of the one of the enemy's favorite attacks on us, I think. And so we need to pray that uh, God would lift that. Uh, Victor Manuel is struggling with some alcohol stuff and drugs, so we need to pray for pray for that as well. Um, and just pray for Martha. She. Um, um, is your business open yet? No. No. Um, because of the time, I've been delayed in everything. So I um, plan to be open on June 1st. I also got a job at night time. Okay. I'm going to be working daytime and night time. I will be working at Ben and Jerry. Okay. Oh boy. Yes. Yeah, that that's not a good plan long term, but <laughs> Okay. So Martha's had the opportunity to reopen her salon uh, in the mall. Um, and so if you remember that whole story, praise there's a huge praise on the other end of that. So we'll we'll talk more about that, but uh, God allowed that salon to be shut down very quickly, and out of the blue, God has allowed for that salon to open up very quickly as well, Um, and so there's a lot of stuff in between there. We'll hear from Martha on that more, but just pray for her as she navigates that that transition and change um, as well. Um, I can't tell if there was any other prayer requests online. Uh, Um... Oh, the Mansfield family. Uh, so we have friends who um, his father just passed away 
uh, Friday night as well. Uh, so we need to pray for the, the Mansfield family. Um, all right, anything? Yes, David. My ex is seeing the laughing out of the media and stuff. Okay. So they have to open up proof of mail that's mine or that's not hers. And okay. It's not like my name on it, like the mortgage and stuff, but she's getting crying and stuff like that. Okay, so David's ex is, um, they're having some. She's just getting very bitter towards me. She's getting bitter towards. This is, this. This time of year seems to be the magnification of relationship stuff. I'm seeing that in my own life uh, with some of my relatives. You know, if, if things are good, it gets great. And if things are not so good, it seems to go south. And so pray for David and his ex as they navigate that. Yeah. Yeah. So pray for David and his ex as they as he navigates being um, tough relationship stuff. Uh, pray for Debbie. She's moving in a week. Uh, Deb Spaulding. Um, so praise God for that. That's an answer to prayer. Uh, first and foremost, she's been in a difficult living situation, and um, hopefully it's going to be way better where you're going, right, Debbie? <laughs> Yes, um, so she's going to be moving on the 30th, so she might need a little bit of help uh, with that. So if you're interested in that, come see me or come see Deb, and we'll uh, help organize just a few hands to, uh, to get her stuff over to the new place. Uh, anything else? So there's another prayer request. Um, so Danny says, prayers for clarity, answers, and understanding in a long-lasting matter of the heart and the strength to accept no if it's to be the answer. Please, she says. That's, um, that's a great prayer, Danny. <laughs> um, pray for clarity, answers, and understanding in a long-lasting matter of the heart. And to accept no if that's the answer. Um, we'll be praying. Uh, yes, Bob. I'd like to just have everybody pray for Summer, my daughter. She's on the front line. <clears throat> Okay. So Bob requests that we pray for Summer. She's a nurse up at, uh, his daughter Summer is a nurse up at uh, CVH. Uh, she's getting her vaccine tomorrow. And so we pray that she would be protected uh, with that. Uh, and also a praise with Summer. She, so the, the hospital does a, an award called the Daisy Award, which is uh, based on patients voting for you. So not, not your coworkers, but patients and uh, apparently Summer was selected. I, I'm not surprised, <laughs> you, you know? She's such a ray of sunshine up there. So uh, praise God for that. Um, yeah. All right, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Um, and then what I'd like to do is have the men come up and share uh, a song with us. And then, um, and then we'll transition to our second set of worship. Uh, let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you that... Um, you sent your son, Jesus, that you um, would be with us. Um, he would be called Emmanuel, God with us. And so we thank you, Lord, for being with us. We thank you, Lord, for being with us in the good. We thank you, Lord, for being with us in the, the, the daily grind of things. And we thank you, Lord, for being with us in the not so good. Um, Lord, we lift up John's brother-in-law's family. We, we just pray that you would provide them comfort in this time of, uh, of immense loss, uh, surprising loss. Uh, we pray for all of those who um, have been exposed to and um, are dealing with the side effects of this, this nasty virus. We pray, Lord, for healing. Uh, we pray, Lord, for protection for uh, us this this Christmas season as we uh, balance the getting together and loving on our our loved ones and family and uh, also being safe and so Lord help us to navigate that tricky balance um, pray Lord that you would protect uh, each and every one here from um, what is becoming um, 
uh, very sad stories of, of folks losing their life with this virus. We pray that you would protect us from that. We pray that you would protect us from even getting this virus, that uh, even if um, the side effects are are mild, there are still side effects, and who knows long-term what that looks like. And so we pray, Lord, that you would protect, you protect us. Um, I, I thank you, Lord, for the recovery of Tammy's family uh, from COVID. We thank you that you have brought them through that and you have healed them. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for uh, summer, and we thank you, Lord, for all of our nurses and folks on the front lines of battling this virus. And we pray, Lord, protection over them. We pray, Lord, strength for them. We pray, Lord, peace uh, for them. Uh, I think of Carolyn McDaniels as well up at, the, um, up at Woodridge. Uh, so many, Lord, are serving, um, first and foremost, because they love to serve. And uh, secondly, Lord, it's their livelihood. It's how they are able to pay their bills and um, do the things that they need to do. And so, Lord, we just pray protection over each and every one. Uh, I thank you, Lord, for this time this morning to worship. I, I, I thank you that we're able to come and gather and worship you this morning. Um, uh, Lord, I also lift up the Mansfield family. Uh, in their time of loss, I pray that you would provide them comfort this Christmas uh, as they've lost a dear loved one. Um, I pray, Lord, for this week as we celebrate Christmas and the birth of Jesus, that those who are struggling with loneliness and depression and um, maybe celebrating Christmas for the first time without loved ones. I pray comfort and peace for those, uh, those folks. I lift up Martha and her family. I thank you, Lord, that um, of how you're working in her life. Uh, I pray, Lord, that you would provide her wisdom and knowledge and, and just give her the, the, the right path forward in the, in the decisions she needs to make. Lord, we lift her children up to you and we recognize that they are yours and we pray that you uh, would individually draw each of them back to you. Um, and not just a little bit back, but fully back, that they would come to you with arms wide open and worshiping you like never before. Um, I pray all these things, Lord, in your name, Jesus, that uh, the name that is above all other names, there's no one else we can come to and ask, but we lift all this up in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to have the guys come up. Um, they did a quick organizing of themselves to um, sing a song for us this morning, and uh, we're going to do our best for those folks online to capture this for you. Um, we had to make a slight modifications to some sound equipment to make that work. Uh, so hopefully you guys can hear this. himself into, into their context. May it be for your glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, this is the men's group, and you may notice that because of COVID and travel, some of the, 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 the stalwarts, the rich, rich and rich, for example, are not here, but praise God, others have stepped forward for the first time, and I just think this is, this is just wonderful. And I appreciate them being here. We will sing Joy to the World. And on the fourth verse, you all are going to stand up and you're going to sing with us. Okay? Joy to the world. i 
and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. We're waiting for the second day. We can turn up there. Yeah, sure, it's there. Oh. <laughs> Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as. This was my favorite Christmas carol as a child. I'm not sure why.
seeing that little baby in the manger for the first time. Imagine being there. That's what I think about when I hear this song. Thank you, Jesus, for being Emmanuel, God with us. And we say, yes, you are all those things. You are the Son of God. You are wonderful. You are our counselor. You're the Prince of Peace. And this morning, we lift you up. We lift you up and we say, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming that, that we might see God face to face. And so, Lord, this morning as we uh, read in your word the account of uh, your birth uh, and leading up to your birth, we pray, Lord, that you would help the words be more than just words, that, Lord, they would be transformative to our hearts, that they would be transformative to our minds, that we would change how we think, not based on what some guy is telling you or telling telling us but what you have to say that we would change our mind based on what you would have us to change our mind to and how you would have us to think so help us lord this morning help me this morning as i speak allow the words to be your words this morning Uh, i need you to do that in, in in and through me this morning in jesus name amen 
You may be seated. So the title of the message this morning is Not the Plan. Not, not the Plan. Um, I don't know if uh, you were like me, um, but in the, when this show was on, when was A-Team on? 80s? 80s? Man, I just love that show. Um, one, I love that nobody, there was never any blood. I don't understand how that happened, but there was never, I mean, it, as, as many guns as there were and crazy stunts, like nobody ever really got hurt, uh, which was kind of cool. But I, I loved at the end of the show, there's a, there's a classic line that every time the show happened, uh, Hannibal at the end would, would, towards the end of the, the, the show would say, I love it when a plan comes together. You guys, know what, you guys remember that? Uh, I love it when a plan comes together. And boy, do we love it when our plans come together, don't we? Um, and uh, we like to plan. Uh, I, I, I've said a couple times, if you'd like to tell God a joke, tell him your plans. Uh, but we certainly love to plan. And sometimes the plan doesn't come together just like we wanted it. Uh, and sometimes the plan comes together like nothing, like it just never, it just doesn't seem to work out like we had in mind. And um, I think it's safe to say that 2020 was, uh, did not go to plan. Didn't go to my plan, at least. What about you? Your, did, did 2020 go to your plan? Um, and yet... Um, as we can all say, 2020 didn't go to our plan. Um, there's someone who I think is in charge, and it went exactly to plan. Uh, and that's kind of hard to say sometimes, wouldn't you? Right? I mean, how, how can we say that this, the world, the way it is is right now, is how God ordained it to be? And and yet. On the flip side of that, how can we say that it's not? Because God is sovereign. God's in control of all of it. God can speak a word and just create out of nothing. And not only did he create out of nothing, but he continues to sustain everything that happens in the world. And so if we believe and trust that God is sovereign, God is sovereign today over this church service, over uh, what's going to happen as we drive home. He's sovereign over this past 12 months of the year. Uh, over the past nine months that have just been just unprecedented. And, and yet we, we have to trust and believe that, that it went to plan. And that's hard to say. You guys agree with me on that? Or do you, I mean, it's, when I think of families losing loved ones, I mean, that's never something we, we have it in mind or want to plan. You know, a family from Thanksgiving to now losing a, a father, losing a brother-in-law, you know, losing a husband within just a few short weeks. I mean, that's not in our plan. And it's really hard to say. Like, this, I don't say this just lightly and flippantly, but things are going according to God's plan. And it's not that we, need, we, we blame him for that. We don't, we don't blame him for the loss or the things that have happened this year. But at the same time, we understand and recognize that God is sovereign at all. There, there's a reason for things happening. And I just don't, like, I, I, don't, I couldn't look into the family's face and say, you know, this is the reason this happened. I don't, I'm not God. I don't know. But I do know my God is sovereign. And I do know my God's in charge of it all, that he has... Uh, as the, the kid's song says, he's got the whole world in his hands. The whole world. All the way down to the smallest detail, he's got it in his hands. This birth of Jesus, 2,000 and some years ago, um, wasn't according to the plan of what the nation of Israel even thought it would be. It wasn't according to the plan of the religious leaders of the day. It wasn't according to the plan of Herod, who sought to kill that baby boy years later. It wasn't the plan of a teenage girl, Mary. It, it certainly wasn't the, the plan of the husband-to-be, Joseph. 
And yet, it was all according to God's plan. And so I would say to, to us today as we get into this, that, that no matter what it is that happens, no matter what kind of turmoil that comes, no matter what sorrow comes, no matter what su- surprises to us come, God's in control and he's got a plan. And it's not my plan, but it's his plan. Not my will be done, but your will be done. So let's open up our Bibles to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, we're going to start reading in verse 18. Uh, we're, we're going to read about a man named Joseph, the, the man who would become Jesus' earthly father. And we're going to read through his reaction to this surprise that happens in his life. Um, Joseph was on a path. He was, um, he was on his way to get married. He was on his way to starting a, a life just like many of his forefathers did in the, in the culture of the day. Um, he was a carpenter. He uh, was just getting ready for life to begin. You, you, you remember that when, when you were engaged to be married and, and what that felt like and looked like? You're like, okay, the whole world is in front of me. The whole world with my spouse is in front of me, and um, I've got life to live coming up, and, uh, and then this surprise happens, uh, and it's never happened to any of us quite like this, but we're going to see how, how Joseph reacted to the surprise of this, and it's going to teach us a couple of lessons on how we should react or how we could react to situations in our life where we would just say, that was not the plan. (laughs) That was not the plan. So let's read verse 18 of Matthew 1. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to, to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. So there's some explanation that needs to happen here. It says that Joseph and Mary were pledged to be married. And in the culture of the day, this, this phrase that's translated for us, pledged to be married, is, is actually they were already married. Uh, once once a, uh, a couple decides they were going to get married and get engaged in this culture, there was some uh, pledges that happened, some uh, dowry that, that got exchanged between the husband-to-be and the, the daughter's family. And as soon as that decision was made, legally, by law, they were already married. Now, it's a little different than how we work in our culture because we, we have a, a proposal that happens and an engagement, and really that's just to say, okay, I'm promising to marry you at some date in the future. And then there are times when that proposal and that engagement gets broken off and there's no legal ramifications to that because legally in our culture that that's not marriage but in this culture as soon as the engagement the pledging to be married happened they were married the two of them were married they just haven't come together as one to live in one household there's a preparation time that happens so she would be preparing to leave her household her family she'd be gathering her belongings you know getting mama's blanket, getting the jewelry that she was due from her family, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And he would be preparing to welcome this woman into his life. He would be either building a house or buying a house if his family was wealthy and they could just buy a house for him. Uh, He would be preparing all the things that needed to happen in order to have this woman come into his life and support this, this woman as his wife. So there was a, a preparation time that happened, and that varied based on family to family. You know, in some cases, that pledging to be married and wedding, we're going to call it, because they were already married, but the wedding feast that would happen and the actual consummation of the marriage and what we would consider the actual start of the marriage, that could happen from weeks to months to even you know, up to a year later. Um, But as of the pledge of, of the pledge to be married, they were legally married. Um, So they're in this time of preparation. They're in this time of getting ready to, um, 
getting ready to consummate their marriage, to have a wedding feast, and all of a sudden, boom, the news happens. Mary is pregnant. Now, I don't know how you gentlemen or ladies would react to this kind of news. Um, I just imagine it for a minute. You know, you're, you're engaged to be married, and your spouse tells you, I got a kid coming. And you're like, um, hold on. I know how that works, and this hasn't happened. So, yeah, we need to have a little conversation about that. That's the position Joseph was put in here. Joseph found out that Mary was pregnant, and he's like, I haven't even laid eyes on her that long. Like, I haven't even looked at her that much. And she, so I know it wasn't me. And yet she was supposed to be mine. She legally were married. She's legally my wife. I know a little bit of how I might react to that. I mean, that's a betrayal that is completely uh, on another level. And this was not Joseph's plan. I mean, I, I can imagine Joseph looking ahead and saying, all right, we're going to have some kids. It's going to be a year or two later. We're going to have some kids. And then he's like, we're having a kid and we're not even married yet. We're not even like, how is this? This isn't my plan. This isn't, this isn't how it was supposed to go. I think we can relate to those words. This, is, this, this wasn't how it was supposed to be. And here's how Joseph reacted, verse 19. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had mind to divorce her quietly. Joseph knew that by a law, he could stone her to death. He, he could, by law, have her stoned. And he understood the law. He, he understood because he was faithful to it. He had heard it. He had been preached to, he'd been taught to follow the law and to know what the law is. But he also knew that the fulfillment of that consequence of the law was his decision. He, he knew it was up to him to call for her stoning. He knew it was up to him to decide what the punishment was for the wrong against him. Legally, up to the full extent of the law, stoning by death. Or it could go all the way on the flip side of things and you just like forget about it and just go on with life. And so he chose a middle road. He chose a middle road rather than stoning her, rather than just uh, this never happened. It did. He decided to go a middle road and say, I don't want to expose her to public disgrace or shame. This is a shaming thing, public shaming. Instead, he responded with grace. Isn't that interesting? Like the very first act of Jesus uh, putting his plan in place amongst the couple, and he is wronged like no one. This is one of the greatest wrongs there are, and he responds in grace. So that's our first lesson for today. When, when things, when you say, this is not the plan, this is not the plan. And I don't know about you, but sometimes when when things don't go according to my plan, I'm just like, I want to wring somebody's neck. I don't actually do it, but I want to. I just want to give somebody an earful about how this wasn't how it was supposed to be. I've got some stories over the last month. Not even month. What's today? The 21st? In the last 20 days. Today's the 20th. We moved into our house uh, 20 days ago, and in the last even month prior to that, I could say, man, this wasn't how I had this planned out. This isn't how it was supposed to go. You didn't follow through and do what you said you were going to do. Uh, I, went, I needed a new washer and dryer, looked online, saw a washer and dryer in stock at a store, drove to the store to pick up said washer and dryer, say, Hi, Mr. Guy behind the appliance counter. I'd like this washer and dryer, please. They say, oh, sorry, we don't have that in stock. I'm like, what do you mean you don't have it in stock? It says here you have three. 
You have three washers and three dryers. I would just like one of them. I'm sorry, I can't give you any of those. And I say, okay. I get the rest of the stuff that I needed, go in the parking lot. I'm like, oh, I'll just order this online. I'll just pick it up whenever it's ready. You know, a couple weeks, I've got, I, I, I can make it work. Drive the almost hour home, hour plus home. I get into my driveway. This, this, seriously, I, I, I am not exaggerating. I pull into my driveway from this long drive back from the store. Ding! Your order is ready to pick up. You see, this wasn't my plan. My plan was I had it in stock, and my plan was I'm going to drive to the store and I'm going to pick it up. This is not my plan for it to be ready to go when I get home, and, and I've just wasted my day. Do, do I want to respond with grace in that moment? No, I don't. So I don't respond at all. I'm, I'm getting ahead, but the, the, the next lesson for us is just to wait, wait on a word from the Lord. But how, have, have you ever been in contact with someone um, who, who has really been wronged? And, and, and in the midst of really being wronged, they just respond so gracefully and so with, with such grace. And, you know, like the world is falling apart all around you, and yet you have this grace that you respond with. I mean, how, how much, how great of a witness is that? And this is what Joseph does. He had every right to publicly shame this woman for being pregnant before they got married, before they were married, married. We'll call it, we'll use that twice, that word twice. You guys know what I mean. Before they were married, married, she, had, she was pregnant. He had every right to publicly shame and stone her, and he didn't. He did not want to publicly disgrace her. So he showed her grace. And then it says that he um, had in mind to divorce her quietly. So that word divorce uh, conjures meetings, meaning for all of us. Um, I, I come from a divorced family, household. We all know somebody that that around us that has gone through a divorce. And it's difficult, it's hard, it's messy. But that's really not what this, what, what this word means here. This word means to set free. He had in mind to set her free from her obligation to marry him quietly. He was just gonna, I mean, small town, Israel, Word spreads just like it does here in small town Vermont. Oh, did you hear about so-and-so? She was supposed to get married to this guy, Joseph, and then she got pregnant, and now they're not married. Like, she's got this kid out of wedlock, and it's a mess, but somehow we didn't hear, like, we're hearing about this after the fact. She's got this baby boy now, and that could have been how the story goes, and Joseph could have gone on some daytime show you guys know what i'm talking about the, the daytime show and just exposed her publicly and disgraced her and been like hey did you hear what mary's done look at her we were supposed to be married and and this is what she does to me he could have done all that he's just like nope i'm i'm gonna i have in mind to just quietly just set her free from this obligation to marry me i'm just gonna go about my life and i'm gonna let her go about her life and i'm gonna show grace so when plan the plan doesn't go According to your way, respond with grace. That's our first lesson. Let's keep reading. Verse 20, But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you're to give him to the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. I've already alluded to this, but our next, next point or next lesson when things don't go according to my plan, when it's not the plan that we have, wait for a word from the Lord. Wait for a word from the Lord. It, it says in verse 20 that Joseph considered this. That word considered means it's, 
It's not just a fleeting thought or like a reaction like, oh, jo- Mary's, Mary's pregnant? Oh, here we go. No, he says, oh, Mary's pregnant. Oh, man. Mm. Ooh. What am I going to do with this? What are my options? Well, my options are I could marry her, just pretend that the baby's mine. I could, uh, on, a, on a far side of things, man, I, the law says I could stone her. That would probably feel pretty good. Get revenge. No, 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 I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Okay, let's see. Oh, I, I, can, I can take the middle ground here. I'll, I'll just divorce her quietly. He considered it. It took him time to come to this conclusion. It, it, it wasn't a rash decision. And our culture is one that tells us we've got to make a decision now. I mean, half of the channels on TV are like, and if you act within the next five minutes, there's more. You got to make a decision in the next five minutes. If you call now, we're going to, no, we don't need to make the decision right away and fast. And yes, sometimes we'll miss out on something, perceived miss out on something. But we feel like we got to make a decision now. We got to decide now. We got to do now, 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 quick, quick, quick. And God's word all over the place is saying, wait, wait, be patient, consider Consider your options. Consider what's going on. I don't know about you, but I can get myself in trouble in acting too quickly and reacting too quickly and making decisions too quickly. You know, God protected us from that a couple times in this purchase of this house that we bought. So I saw the house on a Thursday, cutting down a tree. Uh, Some of you heard this story, and on Sunday, Renee comes home from a women's retreat, and I share with her, hey, I just saw this house, showed her pictures. She's like, yeah, 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 this is a dream. Why are you showing me this? This is never going to happen. I said, well, actually, I was considering this and looking at things like, I think it might work. No, I think it might. And so Tuesday we met, or Wednesday we met with the realtor, looked through the house, we're like, yeah, we really like it. There's a few things that we, but uh, as we were leaving the house, another couple shows up to look at the house. Another family shows up. And we're like, oh no, they're going to get the house and we're not going to get the house. We got to make a decision quick. We got to make a decision quick. So we put a full price offer in on the house. And by God's grace, the owners said no. They said no. And we prayed, and Renee and I sat in the driveway multiple times over the course of this process and prayed, God, your will be done. You know our desire. You know we love this house. We'd love to live here. Uh, But we want your will. We want it to happen the way you want it to happen. And we just got this answer, and the the owner said no to a full-price offer. They said no. God, what are you doing here? We said, you know what, we're just going to step out in faith and we're going to put our house on the market. We're going to sell our house. And as soon as we get a contract on our house, if that house is still to be ours, it'll still be available. And we'll put an offer in then. So we put our house on the market within two weeks. So, so two, we went from, we're not going to move. We're happy where we're at. We love our house. We love, our, you guys, some of you have seen our kitchen, our, our old kitchen. Like, that kitchen was amazing. We just got through finishing it the way we wanted it. We weren't planning to move. So when in two weeks of us saying, we're not, we're happy, we had a full price offer on our house and then some. So we went back to the owners and said, notice your house is still on the market. Not under contract, right? Nope. Well, we'd like to put in a different offer. And... It's going to be 3% lower, and we'd like the riding lawnmower. And so the answer, the original answer of no, turned into walk by faith with me, wait on what it is that I have for you. And so we ended up getting the house for way, way less and got more out of the whole process by just waiting. You know, a rash decision could have gotten us into a mess. 
of things. And yet by God's grace, he protected us from that. And so when, when someone's telling you, make a decision, make a decision, make a decision, sometimes it's okay to say, I think we just need to wait on a word from the Lord on this. And, and not an indefinite, uh, that drives me crazy too, not an indefinite, oh, we're just going to wait on the word from the Lord and three years later, you're still waiting on a word from the Lord. And sometimes God's just saying, you got to make a decision. Joseph couldn't just wait forever. This baby's coming. <clears throat> He's got to make a decision soon. But rather than making a snap, rash decision that can get him into trouble, he waited. He considered. The truth in this is that God is always, always, always at work. He's always at work. He's at work in this, the things that are going right in our life. He's at work in the things that aren't going so right. He's in work in the things that are complete surprises to us. And we just need to take a moment and say, God, where are you in this? Not like, where are you? You're nowhere to be found. But where are you in this? Because he's in it. He's in it. We just need to wait for a word from the Lord. God is always at work in our mess, in our failed plans, even in the perceived wrongdoing of others. Even in the perceived wrongdoing of others. Joseph could have made a, um, a snap decision based on what he knew of the situation with Mary, and it could have been, um, uh, he, it was per a perceived wrong against him. She's pregnant. I know how this works. I know what she did. No, you don't, Joseph. <laughs> no, you don't. Wait on a word from the Lord. The Lord's got a different explanation for this. And this, a complete miracle of a situation. And how much more could, could a perceived wrong in our, against us? You, you know, you, you imagine somebody has done something wrong to you or towards you and you say man and god's just like hold on a minute let me explain what's going on here and god explains to him this baby is from the holy spirit this is my son he's going to save the world from their sins joseph could have missed it he could have missed it he could have missed being the dad of Jesus if he had not waited on a word from the Lord. So when our plans fail, when it's not the plan that we had, respond with grace, wait from a word from the Lord, and let's now read to the end of the chapter, and we'll get our last, our last point here. Verse 22, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. If we look at the situation from Joseph's perspective, from a man's perspective, there's only one conclusion. Mary had an affair. But from the perspective of God, he had been planning this for a while. 700 years he revealed his plans to Isaiah, and Isaiah wrote them down as a prophecy. 700 years. And then he revealed, revealed this plan to Joseph in a dream. And after hearing God's plan, what does Joseph do? He follows God's plan. And we have all the best intentions in making our own plans. And then something, gets, something happens and a wrench gets thrown in and we get all mad and we stomp our feet and act like a three-year-old. And then hopefully somewhere along the way, God reveals his plan to you and you, you have the, the chance to respond and say, all right, God, I'll, I'll do what you, you've revealed to me what your plan is in this. All right, let's do it. All right, let's do this thing. 
And so that's what Joseph does. He follows God's plan. You know, God might reveal something crazy to you. <laughs> like go buy a house <laughs> that you weren't looking for. And I truly believe God's got a plan for that place. I, I cannot wait for uh, some of the ministry opportunities that are going to happen in this, in this new place that we're at. Um, it's, it's so exciting. I, it, it's, uh, it's going to be, um, I think it's going to be our Crossroads Berlin campus. How about that? And so I look forward to us having, and, but if we're not, if our eyes are not open to see where God might be at work, we're going to miss it. If we've got this plan, like, yeah, all right, Lord, this is how we're going to do this thing. So we're going to renovate the entire house, and then we're going to live happily ever after. That was my plan. And I just put a bunch of effort and a bunch of money and a bunch of work into this house, and then next thing you know, I'm giving it up of God's plan. God's got something else for us. And this is, this is where Joseph was. He had a plan. He had this idea. All right, I found myself a good girl. This is Mary. And I've gone through the process of, of getting, her to, getting her and her family to agree that I'm going to be her husband. And I got these plans. This is how it's going to work. And whoa, wait, she's pregnant? That wasn't the plan. What am I going to do with this? Well, God revealed to him, this is the plan. This is what I, I'm doing. I'm doing through your life and through Mary's life. This baby boy that's to be born, it's way bigger than you. This has been in the works. This has been planned for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years. God had in mind to send himself in the form of Jesus, in the form of a baby boy that he might be God with us. That he might, not that he might be able to relate to us better, but that we might be able to relate to him better. There's a story I told uh, a couple years ago. Um, story of a, and I don't know if this is a true story. It's just, just bear with me, okay? It may not be true, I don't know. It doesn't matter. But there was this um, family, and the husband was just all done with church, he said, all done with Christmas. He said, all that stuff is just, I'm just leaving it with my childhood. You guys do what you want to do, but I'm not celebrating Christmas uh, like that. I'm not coming to church with you. I'm not, I'm not doing any of that. And the family begged and pleaded with him, come, come with us. He says, no, that's, I'm just not going to do that. So the family, rest of the family got ready. Wife and kids got ready and went to church. And as they were the leaving, they left the door open and a bird flies into the house. Just out of the blue, a bird flies into the house, and this guy tries as best he can to, like, he's got a broom, and he's shooing the bird around the house, and the bird's just freaking out. Just freaking out, like, just can't get out of the house, and so he's trying to shoo it one way, the bird goes the other way, he's like, why would I listen to that guy? So flies into another room, and so the bird's completely in the back end of the house, and the guy's like, man, what am I going to do with this bird? Bird's tearing things up, it's going to poop in my house, it's going to it's a mess. And he says, man, if I can only just communicate with that bird, if I can only just get the bird's attention and understand, if I was just, if I were a bird, then I could talk in bird language and tell the bird what was going on. And in that moment, it clicked for him. He says, That's what Jesus came for. That's why Jesus came. I, I, he was just a bird flying around in a room. God's trying to push him around with a broom. And, and we, we just don't understand. The nation of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, and God's like, follow me, listen to me, do what I'm asking you to do. And they were like just grumbling, like they're just birds flying around. And if he could just come and I could just communicate with that bird. And then the guy realizes that's what Jesus came to do. He came to be a man in order that he would better be able to communicate with us, that we might better be able to relate 
to him and to listen to what he has to say. And the way the story ends is the guy gets his clothes on, gets ready for church, and heads to church just as the Christmas pageant was taking place. God came, not that he could better relate to us, but that we would better be able to relate to him. This was his plan. And without, the, without Joseph taking the time to, one, respond with grace, respond with grace to this situation of being wronged. I mean, I, I could have stopped preaching at that, at that point. I mean, I think we all need that. And the story I told about the washer and dryer, I could tell another story about a, a, a refrigerator this week. <laughs> Who buys a house and then a week later the refrigerator dies? Who, who, who needs a refrigerator and can't buy one anywhere? Who, who buys a refrigerator and it gets promised for a certain date and then it's two days later before you get it? This isn't my plan. God, what are you doing? Yeah, testing me. And, and, and we, we, our nature is to just Wring somebody's neck about it. I mean, that's probably not a great phrase to say, but it, it, it's how you feel. You just want to lash out and say, I want my appliance. Why did this happen? And instead, God says, respond with grace. You don't know the, the full extent of the situation. I don't know why my refrigerator was delayed that long. I've got some ideas. I've, I've, I've imagined some scenarios in my mind of how it happened. God says, you don't know the full story. Joseph had in mind how Mary got pregnant. God says, eh, I got, that, that happened a different way. So when your plan doesn't go the way it's supposed to go, respond with grace and then wait for a word from the Lord. He's going to reveal and say, here's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Here, here's, here's how I'm at work. But it takes us intentionally. This has to be intentionally saying, God, what are you doing in this situation? Not like, God, what are you doing? But God, what are you doing? Where are you at work in this? How, how, how can I, what's my part in this? We got to wait on the word from the Lord. And then when it comes, when it comes, this is, the, this is the biggest point of all. We have to be willing to follow God's plan. We have to be willing to follow God's plan. I say to my kids uh, sometimes, this is what's happening. We can either do it the easy way or we can do it the hard way. And I think God says that to us too. We can do this the easy way or we can do this the hard way. I can either, uh, you can either humble yourself or I can do it for you. And let me just say the first option is the easy way. Humbling yourself and saying, God, I need you. Humbling yourself and saying, Jesus, I need you. That's the easy way. Because the alternative is being brought to the end of yourself through circumstances, through whatever, and then coming to the end of yourself and saying, all right, I lose. I give up. Follow God's plan. God's plan in Christmas was to be God with us. To be God with us. That was his plan. That's the plan for Christmas. That's the, the great news of Christmas, is that God loved us enough to be God with us, to send us on Jesus. Following God's plan starts with, just like Joseph, accepting Jesus as the Son of God. Let me say that again. Following God's plan starts with us, just like Joseph, accepting Jesus as the Son of God. That must have been difficult for Joseph. 
That must have been difficult. I mean, who would ever imagine? Yep, I'm going to get married, but my wife-to-be is pregnant. Oh, must be God's son. Yeah, that's plausible. But Joseph accepts Jesus as the son of God in the midst of what, have, what must have been a very painful time. Following God's plan starts with accepting Jesus. Accepting Jesus to take care of our sins. He, he told Joseph, I'm sending this boy. I'm coming to you in the form of a man in order that, man's, that, that man would be saved from his sins. Your sins, my sins, we deserve death. Just like Mary deserved, if she had been um, unfaithful to Joseph, she, had, she deserved to be stoned. We deserve that and so much more. And Jesus says, I've come. I've come to save you from your sins. Not just the consequence, the eternal consequence of sins, but to save you from your sins here and now, today. Sin is a bondage. You talk to anybody who is tied up in habitual, self-destructive sin, and they'll tell you, man, it was bondage. I was a slave to it. I could not get away from it. And Jesus says, I've come to set you free from that. Go back and listen to the message from a couple weeks ago when uh, Teen Challenge came. Woo! Jesus set those men free from the bondage of sin in this life as he sets us free from the penalty of hell and eternal life. So, this Christmas I ask you, will you accept Jesus as the Son of God? Will you say yes to him just as Joseph did? I would venture a guess to say it's probably easier for us to accept Jesus as the Son of God than it was for Joseph to. Will you make him Lord and Savior? It's, it's, oh, it, it's one thing to claim and say Jesus is, son of, is the Son of God because even, even demons have said that. You, you look through Scripture. We know who you are. You're the Son of God. But that doesn't mean those guys are saved. No, those, those demons are still demons. Even they recognize Jesus as Son of God. So, so the second point is, will you make him Lord and Savior of your life? Will you say, I, I will humble myself and, and now say, Jesus, take over. As the song says, Jesus, take the wheel. I give you permission to take over. I give you permission to be Lord of my life just as much as I give you permission to be Savior of my life. You know, some of us, um, I know I've, I, in my past, I've gone through these, this time of where I've just kind of walked away a bit, where I've lost that, that love, that fire for following after Jesus. I don't know if that's where, where any of you are at. I don't know if you've come to a place where you're just like, you know, I, this is... I put them on a shelf. I took my Bible and literally just put it on a shelf and just, I, I want to do this thing myself for a little bit. And you would say this, this Christmas, you say, this is the Christmas I'm going to say, I'm going to rededicate my life to Jesus. I'm, gonna, I'm going to come back to the, the love that I had for him when I first accepted him as Lord and Savior. I think he's calling some of us back. I think he's calling some of us back. And, and even um, people like me who are pastors, we, we need to do this from time to time. You know, you, you might sit there and think, well, what do you mean by that? You're a pastor. You're supposed to always be that. Like, yeah, that's, that's the goal. That's what we hope for. But this is a daily process in some cases where we have to renew our mind and say, God, I really messed up. I really messed up. I need to come back to you on, uh, in, in this situation, in this area of my life. Lord, I, I just need to make this right with you. 
So if you had a, a rough go at it for a bit here, your relationship with Jesus is not what it once was. You're uh, not following him the way you know you should be, the way you could be. Jesus is sitting with open arms saying, come back. I've been waiting here all this time. I've been waiting for you to, to get to the place where you would, you would come back and say, Jesus, be Lord of my life again. Jesus, have your way with me. Let this be the Christmas 2020. Hey, this wasn't your plan probably. This wasn't your plan to have 2020 go the way it did. It wasn't your plan to, to walk away and push him aside. But he's saying, all right, here we are in this situation now. Here's my plan going forward. My plan is for you to walk in the fullness of my grace and mercy. My plan is for you to walk free from the bondage of the sin that so, so has taken over your life. My plan is for you to make me Lord of your life again. Will you make that decision to rededicate your life, recommit? I think we all could. Even if, even if you would say, um, you know, I'm doing all right. I think that might be the most dangerous place to be. <laughs> you look through the letters from Paul, and Paul's like, man, I'm the, the, the chief sinner. I'm the greatest of sinners. Like, Paul, you? Really? Yeah. Paul constantly had to fight that battle. So this morning, will we say, not to me, not to the person sitting next to you, but to Jesus himself and say, Jesus, I rededicate and I re-say to you this morning, you are Lord of my life. I give you permission to speak to those areas of my life that, that you want to make, you want to get right. And I know God's doing this. I've had conversations with people in the last few weeks alone where people have said, I'm coming back. Not because I'm coming back to church. I'm coming back to God. I'm coming back to my relationship with Jesus and making him Lord of my life. I have sat myself on that throne and it's been a mess. And so, Lord, I make you Lord again. Let's pray. Father, you know where each of us is at. And I just thank you, Lord, that no matter where we're at, you're always right there. No matter what we've done, no matter what wrongs, no matter what uh, sin is pervasive in our life, you're always right there willing to welcome us back. And so, Lord, I, I can't speak for each one here. I can't speak for each one listening online. I can't, I'm not you. Only you know where, where we're at. And so, Lord, if there's someone here this morning or someone watching that needs to come back to you, I pray, Lord, that you would give them the, the nudge they need. The nudge they, they need to make you Lord of their life again. Lord, let this, let, let 2020 be the year where we, uh, where the church returns to you. Returns to you in the fullness of what, what happened in uh, the early days of the church when Peter and, and, and the disciples began preaching and thousands got saved. Let us return to the point where we are full, fully sold out and, um, dedicated to serving you in all areas of our life. And Lord, I pray that you would start with me. Help me, Lord, to, to recognize those areas in my life where I'm placing other things or other thoughts or other stuff ahead of you. Help me, Lord, to push those aside and, and put you in their place.
I pray, Lord, that you would do that with each one here and each one listening. That we would be committed to following you as Lord and Savior. That we, like Joseph, would accept you as the Son of God. I know it's a little awkward, but I just want to take a moment of just silence and just allow us to process and whatever God's doing, God's doing something with somebody. I just want to take a moment and let him, let him do it. Lord, we thank you this morning that we can come, we've been able to come and worship Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you have come to be worshiped. We thank you that in the midst of of all that's happening and going on, you are still in our midst, you are still here, you are um, desiring that we... um, that we would say yes. That we would say yes to you. We would say yes to your saving grace. That we would say yes to your mercy. But Lord, also that we would say yes to your discipline. That we would say yes. We thank you, Lord, for being patient enough. I thank you for being patient enough with me, with being patient enough with this church, with being patient enough with each one here. That you would give us the time to to come and say yes to you. At any point in time, it can be over. We could breathe our last. And yet, Lord, you've You've given us the grace to be able to say yes. I just thank you, Lord, for the work you're doing in my life, the work you're doing in the life of those here and listening. I pray, Lord, that it would not cease, that we would not cease saying yes. So as we head out here from here this morning, Lord, I pray that you would help us, help us to be the light this world needs, help us to be the encouragement the world needs, not that we would encourage from ourselves, but that we would encourage the world to see you in our midst. Help us, Lord, to be able to say Merry Christmas and know that it's Mary Jesus Christ with us. Happy Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you again, Lord, for this time this morning. I pray blessing over each and every one. I pray, Lord, that uh, even as this can be a, a difficult time, I pray, Lord, encouragement and joy and peace and love over each one here. Help us, Lord, to share that with others as we go about our week. In Jesus' name, amen. God's blessings on each of you. May you have a Merry Christmas, and hopefully we'll see you on Christmas Eve. Uh, And if not, Merry Christmas. God bless.